This video assumes that you're already familiar with setting up a remote desktop server as a display server and setting up applications from your remote desktop server as display clients. To add a new terminal, the first thing we want to do is from the tabs over to the bottom left of the tray, we want to select term the terminal tab. And then at the top left side of the tree, right click on the terminals icon and select add terminal. This will launch the terminal configuration wizard. The first thing we're asked to do is give our terminal a name. I'm just going to call it test01. I can also add a description if I want to, to give more information about the terminal. In this case, I'm just going to go with the name. I can also add this terminal to an existing group if I want to, but for this demonstration, we're just going to go with the setup of the terminal as a standalone terminal. I can also copy settings from another terminal that's already pre-configured if I were duplicating the functionality of a specific terminal. For permissions, I could set access groups or users for my ThinManager configuration to have specific access to this terminal. In this case, I'm going to leave the terminal unrestricted for now. Hitting the Next button now takes me to the Terminal Hardware Configuration window where I can select the hardware that I'm going to be adding to my ThinManager configuration. The first list to select from is the maker and OEM of the thin client hardware. This list presents all of the vendors who make ThinManager ready hardware as well as Apple if you're going to be setting up an Apple iOS device. I'm going to stick with the default generic client for my make, and I can also select the model of the hardware that I'm going to be using as well. And again, we're just going to stay with the default selection of PXE or Pixie for this demonstration. I can select a terminal firmware package to be assigned to this terminal, but that's a more advanced setting and feature that we'll be discussing in later more advanced videos. The terminal ID is simply the MAC address of the hardware that's going to be connected to ThinManager. Once the newly configured hardware is connected and booted into the ThinManager system, the MAC address will appear here and stay attached to the terminal until it's cleared by the administrator. If you have that MAC address information prior to installing your hardware, you're welcome to hit the edit button and add that MAC address manually, which may save you just a few seconds of boot time when adding that hardware to your configuration. The next window we'll look at is the terminal options window. The first checkbox determines whether we're going to allow the terminal to be replaced if offline. Most of the time, our users will leave this box selected as one of the best-selling features of the ThinManager product is the ability to replace terminals in less than two minutes. The second setting here of putting a terminal into admin mode at startup is a more advanced setting we'll be discussing in later videos. You can set a schedule for each terminal by selecting the checkbox of set schedule and then clicking the button to the right. And when you hit add, you'll see you're presented with many different options that can be scheduled for each terminal. Calibrating the touchscreen, disabling the terminal, enabling the terminal. This can be used for shift work to have a night shift, day shift, or some difference between the terminals. Also power on, power off. If the terminal that you've purchased has wake on land capability, you can schedule the power, um, you can schedule the power on, power off through this scheduler. You can also reboot the terminal and reset the terminal. For today's demonstration purposes, we're not going to be setting a schedule for our terminal. You can also enable terminal effects. The first checkbox, Enable Terminal Effects, allows a terminal when in multi-session mode the ability to have multiple applications assigned to a single terminal, and when you move between those terminals in the ThinManager application, it'll transition smoothly from one screen to the next instead of just appearing automatically and instantaneously. Show Terminal Status Messages allows the terminal to communicate any issues that it may be having or whether you're adding a module or a module is offline or online, available or unavailable, those will show up at the top left of the screen for that particular session. The last feature in this window is the shadowing feature. And you can determine a couple of things here. The first is, do you want to allow the terminal to be shadowed? And there's just four basic choices here. There's a no, which wouldn't allow the terminal to be shadowed at all. There's ask, that would ask the permission and the user receiving that message would have to confirm in order to be shadowed. There is a warn, which is going to shadow the terminal that's being asked, but the warning will come up before the shadowing takes place. 
And then finally, there's yes, which just allows the terminal to be shadowed regardless of input from the end user. And then lastly, there's a checkbox here, allow interactive shadow. This is the ability to have view only or an interactive shadow. It just really depends on the administrator and how you want to set that up. Almost always shadowing is available in Thin Manager for sure, but to allow the, sh the terminal to be an interactive shadow determines whether the person shadowing the, that terminal can actually interact with it or not. Next is the terminal mode selection window. The first option is to enable Thin Manager user services. This allows the terminal to react to user authentication, such as login or badge scan. The second option is to enable location services. This allows you to assign the terminal as a location in Thin Manager. Multi Monitor allows you to control multiple monitors and their layout if your Thin client is capable of connecting and using multiple displays. Lastly, Multi Station gives you the ability to use a single client to serve multiple defined stations and control them as desired. Clicking next again will take you to the login requirements. These are extra layers of authentication depending on how you want your terminal to function in your environment. I click the next button again and I'm presented with the video resolution that I'm going to assign to my new terminal. The information in this window is limited by the hardware that you've selected at the very beginning of the terminal configuration wizard process. So there may be more choices or less choices in these dropdowns, depending on what hardware you selected. I'm going to stick with the default settings for our demonstration today. Hitting the next button yet again now takes me to the display client selection window. I'm presented with a list of available display clients that I've already configured in my Thin Manager system. To add a display client to the terminal, you select the display client you want to use, highlight it, and click the arrow that moves it over to the right side pane, which then shows the selected display clients for the terminal that you're using. I'm going to use, in this case, a single display client called Instant Fizz 1920. Clicking the Next button shows my display client selection options. First, I choose whether I want to show the selector on the terminal. That is the drop down menu that flows from the top of the screen. It allows you to move between multiple assigned display clients. If you are assigning multiple display clients, you can also have the option to be able to tile those display clients. But since I only added a single display client, tiling is not available. Showing the selector will allow me to move to the log on log off window, but there are no other options since I'm running just a single display client. I can also have screen edge display client selection selected so that I can move between display clients by dragging my mouse to the edge of the screen either left or right, and the Thin Manager system will automatically display the next client in line. I have the option for allow display clients to move to from screen. This is a multi-monitor feature option that allows you to select and move a display client from one screen to another from the drop-down selector. Next is the main menu options. These are options for the main menu if you have granted access to it. Do you want to allow terminal reboot or restart from that menu? Show the main menu as a selectable option from the drop down selection menu? And also, would you like a virtual keyboard if a physical keyboard is not connected? Last on this screen are the pin pad options. These are options for the display of the terminal pin if you set one up for authentication to the terminal. These are options for the order of the numbers on the pin pad display the size of the pin pad, as well as if you want to show feedback of the numbers pressed on the pad. The next menu is for hotkeys and mouse button configurations. These are just some shortcuts and settings that you might or may not find useful for your configuration. Finally, by clicking the next button, you can enter a username and password, how this terminal is going to log in. I can take advantage of Thin Manager's ability to see into my Active Directory system by hitting the search button here. I have a list of pre-configured users that are available to me. In this case, we can select anybody that we want to select and enter their password. And then I can hit verify on that password and I can see indeed this account information is valid and that it would be a valid user to assign to this terminal. If I wanted to add modules, I could do that here. We have all kinds of modules that can be added to terminals to add additional functionality. 
This may be anything from adding touchscreen drivers to keyboard and mouse modules that do certain things, user authentication modules to expand functionality, or even a screensaver module. There are numerous different options for modules. Again, those are going to be reserved for more advanced videos later in our series. But for now, just know that modules can be added to give your terminals additional functionality above and beyond what they may have out of the box. The next screen is the server monitor list. I'm going to simply stay with the default the manager servers I have set up, but you could change this if desired in your configuration. Moving on, we get to the monitoring configuration window. This is where we set the remote desktop server status for monitoring this terminal. How often will the desktop, the remote desktop servers look to this terminal to get information about what the terminal is doing on the network? And that completes the wizard for setting up our new terminal. So I'm just going to hit finish and then we're done. So let's go and take a look at a terminal that we already have pre-configured in the ThinManager system. I'm going to take this terminal here. That's an awesome 6300T physical thin client. I'm going to set this up with the same display client that we assigned to our test terminal. So I'm going to go in here uh, to the display client selection window and select Instant Fizz 1920, which is what we assigned to Test01 earlier. And now that I've changed that configuration, I'm going to restart the terminal to get the new configuration. And you'll notice the terminal goes red when it's offline, yellow when it comes back, and then green when it's fully connected again. So now this terminal is set up and it has my display client assigned to it, just like Test01. But this terminal is actually live and running in our system. So now my tab system over here to the right will give me real information about what's going on with this particular terminal. I can look at the configuration of the terminal, how I have it set up, what settings are on or off. I can determine what modules have been turned on and activated for this terminal. I can see if I scheduled anything for this unit, which I have not. I can look at the properties of the unit, the IP address, what firmware package it's running, some of the hardware information available about the unit. The event log tells me what the unit has been doing, and of course, I can shadow the unit. And this is that instant fizz application that we loaded earlier. And so I can click on different things and interact with it because it's an interactive shadow. If I had more than one application loaded, this dropdown would allow me to move between display clients. In this case, all I have access to is the main menu, which would allow me to log in or log out. If I had multiple applications assigned to this terminal, they would appear in this dropdown menu as well. And then finally, I can receive a report that can be printed and shared about this terminal. So that is the basics of setting up a thin client terminal in ThinManager using the terminal configuration wizard.